Alright, hello YouTube and YouTube subscribers. Um, today we're going to be doing a species profile on Java Fern, also known as Microsorum pteropus. Now, uh, first of all, Java Fern is probably easily among the top five most popular aquarium plants. It's also probably the best beginner plant along with Anubias. Now, the thing to keep in mind about Java Fern is it doesn't like to be planted in the substrate, even though you can have the plant on the substrate. Just uh, do not plant the uh, rhizome, which is uh, this thing here. It's a horizontal stem, which the leaves grow directly out of. So um, if you do plant the rhizome into a substrate, it'll rot and your plant will die. And another reason why you should not plant the rhizome is that the plant actually photosynthesizes through that also, in addition to its leaves. Now, um, jaw fern generally likes to grow on uh, wood. Now, one thing you can do is you can wedge the plant into the wood and it will anchor itself over time. But another thing I sometimes do is I'll take uh, plants, like the ones right here, and I'll tie them to a piece of driftwood or bog wood using a fishing line or a yarn. Now, the two issues with using fishing line or yarn when it comes to tying the plants to, uh, to um, driftwood or to, say, rocks, is that sometimes the... Uh, yarn will become tangled in onto the bodies of fish, uh, particularly armored catfish. They are, they have a lot of hooks and creases in their uh, body armor and they tend to get tangled up in a uh, fish line or, or yarn. So if you're using, if you have those types of species in your tank, such as uh, plecos and corridors, do not use fish line or yarn, instead use uh, rubber bands. Now with rubber bands, those will deteriorate over time, but that shouldn't be much of an issue because it will last long enough for the uh, plant to uh, anchor itself. Now, uh, java fern is a very hardy, adaptable plant. It can survive in a pH from between 6 to 8. Water hardness isn't too important. It can live in soft or hard water. It can also live in water that has a brackish level of saltness, of salt. So, um, this scurry is good with uh, brackish water tanks. And so if you're doing a bracket water tank with, say, uh, mollies or guppies or some of the main species of the gobies, that are cool as being freshwater, you know, the brackish water, this is a good plant to mix with them. Another reason why people like to keep this plant is that it's a fairly tough plant. It's uh, physically tough. The leaves actually feel kind of like they're made of plastic. And most fish cannot eat this plant, with the exception of maybe stuff like uh, big pecu pecus, stuff like that. Now, one thing about this plant is it's actually slightly poisonous and it apparently has a better taste and it's apparently also completely toxic to scats which scats are one of the few fish that will actually devour this plant but that will be at their own detriment so uh, do not keep jaw firm with scats now one thing about this plant is its lighting requirements it generally grows, along, grows best under low light you know you can keep it in full light also you just have to make sure that your light is intense enough that it will actually start to burn and stuff so if you're doing a highlight tank, what you should do is you grow this plant underneath your taller plants so they'll be shaded or you put it in the corners of the tank where the light is less intense. Now, it can make a good foreground or a good background plant depending on the size of the fern you got since I've seen ferns that are easily a foot tall and probably about a foot wide but that takes a long time for that to happen. As this is a, generally speaking, it's a very slow growing plant. Now, one thing that's good about this plant is being a star plant so that's very easy to reproduce. What simply happens is little uh, plants grow on the leaves through uh, spores and they simply just grow into little mini plants and eventually they break off. Now, you can pop them off and just let them break off naturally. So basically, whenever I go through my tanks, usually I find a whole bunch of java ferns somewhere in the tank floating around little plantlets. And I usually, I'll just let them grow for a bit and then I'll attach them onto a piece of driftwood or I'll give them away. So, um, another thing to keep in mind is this plant absorbs uh, nutrients purely through its leaves. It doesn't really have roots, it just has these little holdfasts growing from the uh, rhizome. So, um, the, root, the leaves are the indicator of the plant's health. If uh, the plant starts to go black, like what happened in this tank to a lot of these leaves that's an indication that your tank's nitrogen is too low and the plant simply isn't getting enough nitrogen to make strong leaves so um... one thing that to keep in mind is the plant also burns quite readily under high light 
it'll uh, turn black also. So usually the blackness is either due to being under too high of light or being too low of nitrogen. And that's about all I got to say about Java Fern. Great starter plant. Easy to take care of. Thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe.